this is biotechnica and you're listening to india's first life science podcast the voice of biotechnica news views and reviews opinion and opinion makers policy critics and policy makers now all on one integrated biotech platform the voice of biotechnica launched on biotechnica's 12th birthday the voice of biotechnica is going to be your voice we will discuss the latest innovations talk about the bright side of life science sector and debate on the darkest side of research our experts will take you on a ride to the deepest secrets of life sciences the voice of biotechnica a weekly podcast released every week on wednesday so what are you waiting for listen to the podcast and voice your opinion too want to talk about something you think is relevant contact us today via email info@biotechnica.org CSIR net fellowship analyzing the unanswered CSIR holds an examination twice a year to award junior research fellowship and lecturer qualification to young aspirants the jrf is aided with a handsome stipend to help our young minds sustain during their research tenure so far we have had a lot of scientific discussions but today i will be discussing about a topic that most students often wonder about but can only anticipate and hope so hello and welcome back to yet another session of voice of biotechnica today our topic of discussion will be around the csir net fellowship i rashmi will be sharing our readers views and a lot of statistics and my question to you all is Is it not the time to increase the CSIR net fellowship? Yes, this is something that delights your ears, isn't it? As a matter of fact, our government supports the thought as well. I will bring upon light to this fact in a few moments. Well, to begin with, let us look at a few aspects. A student generally is eligible for the fellowship only when he or she completes an earned master's degree if everything goes as planned that is usually achieved at the age of 23 now in some cases immediately after the degree the student qualifies the entrance exam of csir and thus becomes applicable for the fellowship in other cases however a preparatory phase is needed that may range from about 1 to 5 years at a stretch hence it would be safe to say that on an average a student of the age 25 to 26 is qualified to obtain the fellowship now the thing that worries all young minds at this age is that when do we get settled passion can only get you this far but sustenance in the field requires monetary benefit now the stipend that is granted today ranges from about 25000 to 28000 per month and it is seen fit for the survival and support of a student during his research phase but if we observe closely we can see that at the same age a lot of fellow students obtain permanent employment and are paid roughly more this is enough to dishearten our students now to add a silver lining to this troubled cloud i bring to you certain statistics that will help you foresee the good news i personally feel it is time for the fellowship to be increased even the statistics agree now let us analyze this together In 2006 the dollar rate was rupees 45 it gradually increased in 2014 it mounted up to a sum of rupees 62 it increased even further 
it approached 73.5 rupees in the past few days of 2018 now that is what we call an inflation if you look at the csir fellowship in the same duration it was rupees 5000 in 1999 it became rupees 8000 to 10000 in 2006 that was of course a 60% increase it was further increased to 12000 to 14000 rupees in 2007 which was a 50% increase now this was further increased to 16000 to 18000 per month in 2010 which saw a 33% hike a further increase was made after a lot of student agitation to rupees 25000 to 28000 in 2014 this saw a 56% increase as we see there is a gradual increase in the fellowship every 3 to 4 years now isn't that a good news however 4 years have passed since the last increase in the said amount following the same trend one may assume that the revised fellowship should amount at least from rupees 32000 to 35000 if not more now the question remains when will this desired change be announced what do you feel about it if you are a recipient of this fellowship or are in pursuit of the same do share your views in the space below when the stipend was increased from 16000 to 25000 rupees A lot of students felt elated but at the same time a lot of students felt the need for more. There are numerous reasons for this though. Firstly, a lot of students get married by this age and find the need to support their family. Once they obtain the fellowship, it becomes roughly easier to manage. However, without having a permanent position or a job assurance, it is still at a critical juncture second of thought a lot of students who are doing their mphil exhaust their fellowship when they are in the fourth year of phd itself and hence they would prefer it to be extended at least to the last year of phd thirdly a lot of students phd work extends beyond the five years of allotted time This creates more anxiety among them as they do not receive fellowship for the extended period. Hence, an initial good amount can be put into savings and can curb all the above mentioned issue. Now, what is your take on this? Is the provided figure enough? Increase to how much would actually prove sufficient in today's world? Is it true that the highest degree has the lowest value? Now students find the given amount insufficient as a lot of it is spent on accommodation, food, subscription to journals, magazines, newspapers for the purpose of research. In some cases a lot of students need to present their work in various seminars that may be held across locations. a lot of institutes refuse to bear this expense of travel often the contingency grants to that are provided prove to be insufficient what do you think about all of this do share your experiences today if we observe accommodation in major cities it roughly costs about rupees 10000 per month on an average the food bill you can add another 2500 keeping on a close budget that is internet usage another 500 rupees subscriptions to all the research materials journals may go up till another additional 5000 rupees attending seminars their travel expenses may require additional 10000 rupees hence A total of twenty five twenty eight thousand rupees can be summed up here itself, just for the purpose of sustaining a student's life. Expenses beyond this are not calculated, which may include medical expenses, 
additional travel, stationery, etc. But like us, the government also has been taking note of these issues. They find a lot of young and brilliant minds leave the country only for the fact that there are better monetary benefits abroad. To curb this issue to a certain extent, August last year, the Modi government had introduced a fellowship hike for 2,000 PhD scholars across the IITs and IISCs. They were granted Rs 70,000 per month for five years of their research as benefit. This was a huge step that brought back smiles on the face of a lot of individuals. On October 6th this year, through a silent march protest, various research scholars appealed to the DST to look into the matter of increasing their fellowship. With a positive response, the officials asked them to be patient as the matter required a lot of procedures before closing and also scheduled a meeting that took place on this November 6th. This worked as a motivation to the expectants. It is anticipated that a positive result may be heard at the end of Diwali. Let me take you to another side of our story. A non-net student pursuing PhD obtains roughly rupees 5000 to 8000 per month which is very difficult for them to survive on. In addition, there are very few institutes who offer such kind of programs where the institute provides a stipend instead of the government. For them, this span of 5 to 7 years is a job as well. But the pay is not enough to sustain. Even they are required to put in hours of effort in solving problems under a supervisor to benefit mankind. A lot of students say that they have to depend on their family for meeting regular expenses for the entire duration of five years. The only drawback for such student is that they have not qualified the national level examinations. Now though that may be a criteria, even these students require voted for their ambition in higher studies. For such students, a fellowship increase to 10,000 to 16,000 rupees would prove sufficient. It would also encourage them to work harder in life. Then what may be the reason of delay? Do let us know your views and experiences on this aspect and stay tuned with us to keep finding more brain teasing questions, facts and arguments. Many aspirants love to pursue the field of research, though they are often discouraged by their loved ones, fearing the insufficient benefit it offers. As days are passing, PhD is becoming mandatory to apply for pursuing the education field. The issue remains that though there are opportunities, the right kind of student strength are not able to apply for it. If we look at the percentage of youth enrolling for higher studies, it is 80 to 90 percent abroad, about 50 percent in China, and India lags at a mere 25 percent. This is an indication of the onset of brain drain in our nation. The government tends to increase this to 50% in the next few years. But is the pace fast enough? Is there anything else that can be done to hasten the process? We are in dire need of good professors to help build better minds and the demand for PhD is ever increasing. To conclude, I can only say that a country's youth is the power of the nation. We need to keep their well-being in mind as well. On the other hand, it is a student's duty to stay truthful to his or her commitments and make sure that their education is used for the benefit of mankind. When the two halves work together, 
a stronger and healthier nation develops thank you